Good morning, and welcome to St. Mary's. Today's Mass celebrates the third Sunday of Lent, and our celebrant this morning is Father Cuddy. We ask that you please turn off all cell phones and any electronic devices during the Mass, and please join us in our opening hymn, Save Your People. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me, and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the, law, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or your daughter, or your male or female slave or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you, 
In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. 
He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, a zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. This Sunday represents uh, one of the greatest opportunities, but also one of the greatest challenges for the preacher, because sometimes, some Sundays, you, you are kind of, it's obvious what the, what the homily, what the sermon should be about. But on this Sunday, it's sort of dealer's choice here because you've got the Ten Commandments. And you can preach any one of these things and not even really scratch the surface with a full-length homily. Instead, though, uh, we go to the Gospel. And there's this interesting, uh, interesting phrase, interesting uh, example of uh, how Jesus relates to his church with the whole overturning of the tables and the driving out of the ox and the ass and in uh, the money changers making a whip out of cords. His disciples remembered the scripture passage that says, zeal for your house will consume me. Zeal is the thing that we ought to consider this morning. Because it's something that not only is it important in, in life, broadly speaking, important in the spiritual life in particular, it's something that unfortunately has been something of a casualty of the past year, marked by coronavirus. Now, I, I read in uh, this great article, uh, which is great and terrifying and sad, uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. And it was about Netflix. And I'm sure I don't need to explain Netflix to, uh, to most of you, but this online streaming service where you can go and watch television shows and, and movies commercial free. It's uh, responsible for the binge watch where you watch one episode after another after another. In the year 2020, the television show The Office, which ran on NBC for nine seasons and, and extraordinarily popular, the Office was streamed on Netflix for a combined total of 57 billion minutes. 57 billion with a B. Or if you wanted to stretch us out, somewhere around 110,000 years in 2020. And that's just the one show on Netflix. So most of us give ourselves over to that kind of entertainment, which isn't bad in and of itself. In fact, I account for at least uh, 3.4 billion of those minutes myself. <laughs> and that this is, uh, this is where so much of our time and energy went at a time when the rest of the world was shut down. It's not much to do, so we've, you know, on with the sweatpants, out with the Doritos, and on with the, the, the Netflix. 
Now, this is not just limited to, uh, to recreational life at home. It goes to the spiritual life as well. And one of the great joys that I have as a, a priest without a parish who gets to go from place to place, uh, like I come here on, on many Sundays, I get to go out to different places and help out with the, the sacramental needs of the parishes. And so uh, first com- uh, it's first uh, confession season. One of the great things I heard at first confessions this year uh, that mitigated some of the shock and sadness of uh, find out how, how, how few uh, children know their, their basic prayers. I was having this one, uh, one back and forth with a, a seven-year-old and, and assigning him his penance. I said, okay, do you know the Our Father? And he kind of looked at me blankly. He said, what? I said, uh, you know, the, the, the prayer, Our Father, who I know. So, well, do you know the Hail Mary? No. I so, said, well, do you, uh, you know, I'm looking for something to give you for your penance here. Do you know, uh, you know any of your prayers? And he said, well, I started to learn my prayers, but, you know, COVID. <laughs> and thank God for the mask I was wearing because I... <laughs> My, my whole face blew up like, you know, COVID. <laughs> and what's true for the seven-year-old is no less true for, for the majority of us. COVID has claimed uh, so much of our, uh, our, our attention, so much of our energy, so much has been given over to things uh, that, that aren't fulfilling, that, aren't, that don't give life uh, to our days, don't give meaning to our existence. You know, COVID. And so it's particularly relevant, I think, to see the, the, Jesus, who is the, the model for all of us of what it means to be fully alive. The zeal that consumed Jesus in the temple this Sunday as he goes in and he drives out the money changers. And I think to myself, and maybe you can think to yourselves, wouldn't it be nice to have that level of zeal? To have our our hearts so ablaze with the fire of love, to act in in such a dramatic way about about the things of the Lord or about life in, in general. And that's what, uh, when it comes down to it, when I, I mentioned the, the dealer's choice with all of, the, uh, all of the options to preach from Exodus, this is what the Ten Commandments are about right here. This is the blueprint for living a good life in communion with God. This is the blueprint for what it means to have a life of meaning and purpose. These are the building blocks, the foundation. To keep holy the Sabbath day, to honor our fathers and our mothers, not to kill, commit adultery, to, 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 to covet that which is not ours, to not value those things that we ourselves have. You go through these things and ask the Lord to give us a rebirth in zeal. To remember all of these things and to try to keep them more and more perfectly. To be able to identify these things where we, we, we fail to keep them. You know, if we hold up a, a mirror to our own lives with the Ten Commandments and see those areas, as surely we all can, that we don't quite measure up. And to resolve to make a good confession during this, this Lenten season. To be reconciled to God and to start out on that road again. The road that leads to him, that road that leads to joy and meaning in our own lives. This is the the, the blueprint right here. Because you and I were not meant to live lives of bland tepidity. Lives of Netflix and Doritos and sweatpants. Lives where we shrug our shoulders and say, well, you know, COVID. You and I were made to live lives extraordinary, lives that are full of of energy and zeal and love and action. There's a certain excitement that's proper to the lives that God has given us 
that for so many of us during this past year un under masks and locked in our homes has started to, to dim and get tired. And this is in no me by no means uh, an encouragement to blow off all of those safety regulations. It's by no means uh, an encouragement to be reckless. But what it is this Sunday from the, 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 the gospel and from what Holy Church gives us is an encouragement to remember what life is and what gives life meaning and what gives life purpose that we can break free from anything that, that, that's tepid, to break free from anything that's lame, to break free from anything that doesn't have that sort of energy and enthusiasm that should be proper to our lives, that makes life so wonderful, those things that we had experienced in such great measure before we were confined to our homes, to find ways to actually make that happen to engage the world and the word of God with zeal, to find these things, to identify those things that we're doing well and praise God, to see those things that we're not and resolve to start anew, to start all over again, to devote ourselves to them, that we might come alive in the Lord and alive to one another, that we might live the lives that God has called us to live for his glory, for our good, and for the good of the entire world. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Your friends, let us bring before the Father our prayers and petitions, trusting that he hears and answers us. For the church, may the Holy Spirit strengthen her in teaching God's law in spirit and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering any type of disease or affliction, may Christ, the divine physician, bring them comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of police, fire, military, and all who risk their lives daily to ensure our safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our beloved dead, may Christ who died for us welcome them to eternal life, especially Michelle Mark, Jean Wells, members of our Mass Intention Guild, and all our beloved deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for Edward and Teresa Aries, and Charles Stalla, for whom our sanctuary candle is lit this week, we pray to the Lord. For those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts.
For those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Charles Weisker, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and grant what we ask in faith. Set us on fire with love for you and love for our brothers and sisters. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is Open My Eyes. Open my eyes, Lord. Help me to see. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings. Grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. So with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Sean our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is Turn to Me.
Our next hymn is Hosea. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Please stand and join me in the parish devotional prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl through the world seeking the ruin of souls. The Knights of Columbus annual food drive will continue through Lent to benefit the Foxborough Discretionary Fund. Please pick up a fish tag on the table in the foyer or see the bulletin or website for needed items. 
On the Monday evenings of Lent at 7 p.m., Father Hines is offering a short introductory series on contemplative prayer, followed by Eucharistic adoration and guided meditation. The Catholic Daughters are continuing their monthly adoration. Join them this coming Wednesday, March 10th, at any point from the end of Mass through 7 p.m. Uh, Father Pastor has asked me to put in a plug uh, for this as well. You can see these at the doors on your way out. The St. Mary's Parish, Foxborough, Shrines of Italy pilgrimage to Rome, Assisi, Siena, and Venice. Uh, October 3rd to 13th, 2021, spiritual director, Father Matt Westcott. I'm not sure what could be better than you've got the, the best places in the world with the best priest in the archdiocese. That's, I don't know what this costs, but it's a bargain at twice the price, I'm sure. <laughs> um, and so uh, it can, if you haven't made one of these pilgrimages before, they're unbelievable and uh, get the information here, and if it, if it works for you, I'm sure it'll be wonderful. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Our recessional hymn is Though the Mountains May Fall. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, Yet the love of the Lord will stand As a shelter for all who will call on his name Sing the praise and the glory of God Could the Lord ever leave you? Could the Lord forget his love? Yet the love of the Lord will stand As a shelter for all who will call on his name Sing the praise and the glory of God Have a good Sunday.